In late winter and early spring, you have a magical time for red lures. Okay, coming in. Number four. No matter if you live in Ohio, Florida, California, or Texas, red is one of the best pre-spawn colors that you can use in just about any lure for bass. But the big question is why? This video is brought to you by sportsmansoutfitters.com. If you guys are looking for tackle, rods, reels, even some of your hunting stuff, Sportsman's Outfitters prices are very hard to beat. So if you're on the market for some new tackle, click those links down below in the description and you're greatly gonna help support the BFHQ channel. There's actually been quite a few different videos done on YouTube discussing why red is such a great color to use in kind of that later winter, early fall time. Now, with that being said, what you're gonna hear a lot in some of those videos is, I don't really know why it works, I just know that it does work. And as bass fishermen, we don't always have to know why as long as we know that it works. For instance, I love to fish a pink floating worm during the spring, and there's really nothing in nature that kind of looks like a pink floating worm, but I know that it absolutely slaughters the bass. So I don't have to know why, I just know that it works, and therefore I'm going to fish it. Now, with that being said, I really have had kind of the similar mindset as to why red works kind of in that early springtime. But lately I have done a little bit more research and I have a few reasons as to why red does work so well in late winter and early spring. Now the first reason why red works so well is actually because of crawfish. <laughs> In some of the southern parts of the United States, you have a crawfish that is known as a red swamp crawfish. I'll put the scientific name right here. I'm not exactly sure how to say that bad boy. Now, during your colder weather winter months, these crawfish are actually going to make little burrows in the clay that they go into when that water's really cold. Now, while they are kind of in this process, they will actually eat zooplankton that is in the clay itself. Now, they're not necessarily trying to eat that clay or that dirt they're in. They're trying to eat the zooplankton, but in the process, they're going to eat some of that clay. And since you have a lot of that reddish clay in the South, those crawfish actually pick up on the pigments that are in that clay, which will actually turn those crawfish a bright red color. This is actually the exact same thing that happens to flamingos out in the wild. If you ever see a wild flamingo, it typically eats shrimp. And the shrimp will actually turn that flamingo pink in color. Now, if you ever see a flamingo in a zoo, a lot of the zoos will feed flamingos squid and they don't pick up on that pink pigmentation from squid. So a lot of your flamingos in a zoo are actually white in color. So when those crawdads, crayfish, crawfish, whatever you want to call them, come out of their burrows in the spring, this is typically around 50 to 55 degree water temperature. And this is also going to be when those crawfish are the brightest red in color, which is exactly why some of your bright red colors can work so well. Now I've also heard it said that crawfish, when they go through their molting process, which they will do that two times a year in the early spring and in the fall, but when this happens, they'll actually change colors to that red as well. Now over the last couple of days, I've done a little research on this, and if you talk to a lot of fisheries biologists, they will tell you that the crawfish that are in our lakes actually don't change colors. But I also read some articles where people who have aquariums that have crawfish, they've seen their crawfish go from a bright blue color to a bright red color when it molts. So to be honest, I really don't know the answer to this. I'm really interested to see if you guys out there have ever seen a crawfish that turns red during molting. Now, another big reason that bass like red during this time of the year actually comes down to the way that bass can see. There hasn't been like a huge amount of research done on the way bass can see, but the research that has been done shows that bass can see a broader spectrum of colors than actually humans can see. So they can actually see more colors than we can. Now, the other thing is, is that it has shown that bass can see greens and they can see reds extremely well. And not only that, they can actually see differences in those greens and in those reds than we can see as humans. So although these two red colors 
may look pretty similar to us, the bass may see them in totally different ways, which is why one red may outperform another red. Now, with that being said, bass can only see red about five or six foot deep, depending on the water clarity. But here's the thing, during that late winter and early spring, you tend to have a large quantity of bass that are moving up into shallow water to start spawning. If you have a huge mass of bass, more bass than ever in really shallow water, a lot of bass are trying to eat up before they get into the spawning process. Because once they start the spawning process, both males and females really do not eat a whole lot. So the fact that those bass are actively eating and they can see red extremely well is exactly why red just works great in that pre-spawn time frame. So there's one, but that hook. <laughs> now, with all that being said, I've also noticed that a lot of times I feel like bass are almost dumber in the spring. I feel like during the winter months, those bass actually get a chance to not just be beat up constantly by anglers. You have anglers that are hunting, they're not on the water, and because of that, I feel like bass actually just kind of get dumber. For example, I was really fortunate growing up because I had a pond in my backyard. You could see down about six foot in this pond. It was about 12 foot at its maximum depth and I remember during the spring of the year when the ice got off it always seems like I would be able to catch bass in this pond off of really bright colors in general. I could catch bass off of chartreuses and fire tigers and reds really really well but once they spawned these colors were literally non-existent. This is also the same time of the year where a lot of guys like in Oklahoma will fish spinner baits that have painted blades on them that are white and chartreuse. Again, it's a bright color. So I really just think that in general, bass react to brighter colors, not just reds, but brighter colors during that late winter, early spring time. Now, before I let you go, I wanna give you three of my favorite lures during this time of the year, this kind of pre-spawn time of the year and also where I like to fish these lures. The first is going to be the one that I've been holding up a lot, which is a lipless crankbait. Now this particular crankbait here is a Strike King Red Eye Shad. And something that I really like about a Red Eye Shad is that it was designed to shimmy when it falls. And one big thing that I like to do a lot of times during this time of the year is actually yo-yo this bait and snap it out of grass and let it fall. So when I'm yo-yoing the bait, maybe I'm yo-yoing it on a rock bottom or on a shell bottom. I'm going to bring that bait up and it's going to fall. And as it falls, again, Again, it's going to have that shimmy. Or if I'm fishing it around grass, which is where I really like to fish this, maybe I have a couple of grass patches outside some spawning flats. I'm going to let this bait kind of get there in the grass. I'm going to rip it out and let it fall. And usually when you're letting that bait fall, is when the bass actually gets this. And even if I'm not fishing it in a yo-yo manner or if I'm not fishing it around grass, something that I really like to do, it's the way I was kind of first taught to use a lipless crankbait, is actually just kind of burn this bait and then kill it. Burn it and kill it. And I have caught tons, I mean hundreds of bass using a lipless crankbait in that way during the springtime. And this particular red crawl color is a great one, again, for all the reasons that we just talked about. Now, another phenomenal lure and one that I've really, really fallen in love with over the last year and a half or so is the Berkeley Fritz side crankbait. Now, something I love about the Berkeley Fritz side is it comes in a number of different sizes and running depths. So whether you're fishing two foot of water or maybe you're creeping down into that six and seven foot of water, there's a Berkeley Fritz side that's going to run to the right depth. Obviously, if you look at the Berkeley Fritz side, it is a flat sided crankbait and flat side crankbaits work extremely well anytime you're fishing cold water, which you're gonna run into a lot. Anything kind of in that 45 to 55, 56 degree range is really where it seems like these red baits shine. Now, the one that I'm holding here is actually the junior size, and it's a pretty light bait. I actually still cast this on bait casting equipment. You might wanna cast it on a spinning rod. I just prefer bait casting equipment. I usually fish it on 10 pound test. It's gonna get this bait down to about four 
four and a half, five foot of water. The thing that I love about this junior size is it really seems to work in that cold, cold water. I mean, when you're in the upper 40s, low 50s, this is a killer. Anytime I'm fishing specifically around rock cover, riprap banks, maybe it's a hump that's four or five foot on top, maybe it is wood cover. This is a bait that I'm gonna pick up a lot in those situations. Now, the next lure has become extremely popular during this time of the year, and actually any time of the year, but this color, and that's a chatterbait. And this is the chatterbait jackhammer. This is a fire crawl color. It does come in a number of different colors. Most people know how well a chatterbait works during that pre-spawn, although a chatterbait really works at any time of the year. And this is one I'm gonna fish a lot around wood cover laydowns and also grass. Anytime I'm around grass, clear water situations, stained, muddy water, a chatterbait will catch them. Now, in this video, we talked a lot about lure and lure colors. I mean, that's what this video is about. But if you want to learn where to catch bass during the early spring, I put together a complete guide right here that really helps you to see how bass transition from winter to spring, and it's going to help you to catch a lot more bass. So click on that video, comment below, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.